Big Mike and Hayes Entertainment here. Today's episode, we got DJ Hoppa. Woo! If you like what we're doing, seen. hit the subscribe button. Yo, oh, what's good? It's DJ Hoppa. Shout outs to I Only Touch Greatness. DJ Hoppa. <laughs> Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. I'm at the point where I never stop. I only touch greatness podcast. I vicious cycles of family grudges. God damn it sucks when you sink in the shoes you standing up in. So then you pray to God hoping his blessed hands are rushing. And maybe provide some guidance towards a source of light. And the heavenly doors divide to eliminate wars inside of my own head. My life's a battlefield where most just don't tread. This dark clouds got me discouraged. All of my hope fled. Anger's revved up like a moped. Circling blocks. Pressure's on. Urging to pop. No reverse. In the block. You know how many niggas I wanna send in church in the box You know how many bitches I done dated that turned into thoughts Plenty no doubt, too many to count Hoes tryna empty your accounts, they itching for clout They'll piss on your crown This is I Only Touch Greatness Podcast With Ryan Hayes and Big Mike We are going live Yeah, we got you now Gentlemen Hey. How's it going, man? How y'all doing? Good, good. DJ Hoppa, thank you so much, man, for taking your time for us today and coming on. Yeah, no worries. My pleasure, uh, man. That's a nice looking studio you got there. <laughs> a little bedroom set up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm Ryan, by the way. This is Big Mike. What's up, nice boy? We've, we've, a- we've actually met you before. Both of us, we smoked joints with you in Vernon outside the, uh, after the venue. Fuck yeah. That's what's up, man. Yeah, ready to be. That's on this last tour with Mad Child or what? Yeah, yeah, with Dizzy Wright and Mad Child and uh, Pimpton. Yeah, yeah, that was a dope tour. It was, it was. Yeah, and he had just got married like the night before, or it was the night before the wedding yeah. or something. And we ended up running. Heard you guys were in town, and stopped by, and we got to smoke with you after the show. Yeah, congrats, man. Thanks, man. Thanks. Uh, so we're just gonna ask you a bunch of questions. Uh, what made you get into DJing and producing in the first place? Uh, shit. Um, just a love of hip hop, man. I had a, I had a cool neighborhood and had a homie named John that had turntables fucking, uh, you know, got to, got to mess around on them and pretty much fell in love. My sister was a big hip hop head. She put me on to like a lot of dope shit, like Tribe Called Quest, Diggable Planets, Farside, like a lot of cruise shit from LA, New York. And, uh, yeah, I just fell in love with hip hop, man. And started DJing like when I was like 16, 17, somewhere around there, high school age. And then, uh, got into making beats. Starting at the house parties. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, we, you know, we were in the Valley, so we were kind of like smoking a lot of weed real young and getting into trouble and shit like that. So we we're all about the kickbacks and the parties and freestyle and shit like that. So yeah. right on, right on. Who influenced you as a music artist while you were growing up? Um, shit, definitely. Uh, my mom, my mom plays cello and she was a huge influence. Cause like every day she'd be playing for like four hours a day practicing. Like she had a crazy work ethic with it. And then, uh, and then I was a big fan of like, you know, I grew up in like the grunge era and shit. So like Nirvana shit like that. And in a line with like fucking hip hop and, uh, like I listed like the old school shit and then, uh, producers like Shadow, Premiere, those guys were big influences on me, like, wanting to make beats. Like, I, I love Premiere beats, love Shadow beats. So, uh, yeah, man, those guys are definitely some big influences. What was it like growing up in L.A.? Growing up in L.A. is, uh, well, I grew up in the Valley, so it's, it's okay. different. It's like, L.A. is like the city. Even though the Valley is in L.A. County, like, it's over the hill. So if you're okay. in the Valley, you're like in the suburbs, you know what I mean? So I'm in the suburbs. And that's, you know, it's a bunch of neighborhood kids. It's like you party till the streetlights come on, playing football, riding bikes, doing all that shit. It's like, uh, it's like your typical suburbia, you know what I mean? And then, and then you end up smoking a lot of weed and getting into a lot of trouble because you're kind of like, you're just bored out here. <laughs> you're bored and riding bikes, all that shit, you know. What's, what actual city is it? San Fernando Valley. Okay. Uh, which is comprised of a bunch of little like neighborhood pocket cities, like, you know, Reseda, Chats. I'm in Chatsworth right now, but uh, there's a bunch of Van Nuys, Panorama City. Shout out to Panorama City. That's where my mom's is at. Um, yeah, but there's like, you know, 15, 20 cities that make up the San Fernando Valley, but it's right over the hill. But it's like when you hear the term like the Valley Girl or shit like that, that's yeah. Valley, San Fernando. Yeah. You play any sports uh, growing up? I played a little baseball, man. Um, 
and uh but i was more into like skateboarding and bmx and shit like that like uh i guess like the self-expressive sports like not really but i love team sports too like i just didn't play too much like not in like high school or anything like that so you work with like some huge uh, name artists obviously like dizzy Wright, jail felony razzcaz moral technique ghostface killer what's that like um I haven't worked with Immortal Technique or Ghostface Killer, um, but I would like to. I might have like just done shows with them or something like that. You know okay. what I mean? Maybe been on the same bill, but I haven't worked with them like that. But um, but the other guys you listed, yeah, yeah. Um, and what was the question like? What's it like working? With yeah, what's guys? it like working with like Dizzy and uh, Jo? I mean, you know, Dizzy's like my bro. That's my homie. Um, so that's like working with fam. Like it's just we're like working with your friend. You know what I mean? It's super easy. Jo's wild. Um, <laughs> he's super fun like uh you know at sound checks we were in we were in europe man and jo like he just be like tripping on the foreign dudes like the, the sound men and shit weren't around he's like where the fuck the sound man out cuh? like you know like looking up on him and shit shout outs to jo man james savage that's the homie that's but, uh, uh we actually had him on twice now we were gonna have him on tonight we tried to get him on we tried to get him on last week with you when we hit you back up again trying to get you on and we had Razkaz and Jo on the same episode and we tried yeah. to get you what we were trying to get you on there too and i, I brought all, them. Is everybody on at the same time like yeah talking? yeah oh, yeah, shit, cool. yeah we tried we tried to do that and uh they might still drop by today i've given them the link so right cool man I bought your CDs, uh, two CDs up there, uh, The Sticks and Stems with Dizzy, and then The Hoppa and Friends. Uh, you just dropped the new one, eh? Hoppa and Friends 2? I did, man. I did. It just came out. Like, it's been out, I think, about, fuck, a week. Not even a week. It's been out six days. So, I mean, I'm stoked, you know? It's like, it's got, it's got, like, over 25 rappers. It's got the whole old crew on there, like, Hop, Dizzy, Jaren Swizz, fucking a bunch of new cats I haven't really worked with yet before, like, uh, Got a song we recognize and uh, the Hoppa Cypher 2, that shit's banging. Um, Ritz, I mean, I've worked with Ritz before, but I mean, like, him, Mad Child, so many MCs kill it. Hop kills it. Like, I'm stoked on that record. Yeah, I just downloaded it today, so I can't wait to listen to it. We were just, I was just pumping some of it before I got here. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, yeah let me know. That, we, were playing, we were playing the one with Raz Cash. Yeah, that's a vibe, dude. That's a, we, we recorded that in Europe and shit. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, we like, um, we made that, I made that in a hotel room on tour, Demerick did the hook, and he did a verse, and then we brought it to Razkaz, he did a verse, Problem came in the hotel room and did the, it goes on and on and on, there's like a little singing part in there, that was Problem, yeah, yeah. he didn't even want credit or anything, he just came in the hotel room, like did that little part and was out, that was cool as fuck, and then, um, and then we sent it to the homegirl Reverie to get on the third verse because she tours Europe all the time. It's kind of like a tour song, you know, about like traveling all around the world and shit. So we wanted to get, um, or I wanted to get that, that female perspective on it um, as well to balance it out and shit. So I hit up Reverie. And got Did you guys up. end up finishing your tour or was it shortened because of the COVID with Disney? Yeah. Um, no, we finished, we finished the tour. Um, okay. We, there was a bunch of shows that got canceled because of the COVID. Like in March, I had a bunch of shows. I had shows with X, um, Exhibit, and I had shows with Dizzy. And all those got, you know, all those got canceled. So, so. Yeah, I actually had, I had Tosh from the Licks on too a couple of weeks ago. Tight, tight. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah like that's that record, not that record, but that artist, that group, the, um, the Licks and shit that was one of the first vinyls like I heard I heard an acapella from them being mixed to like a drum and bass record and like blew my mind man I was just like just so dope but it was an alcoholics record and my homie gave me that record I got it somewhere I gotta find it but uh yeah who in the music industry helped you get to the next level like kicked in the door for you or opened the door for you um early early on I had a homie named Kevin Taylor um that was working in He's working for a record label called Cornerstone Raz. And he let me like, he kind of like let me get some looks through him, like some intern looks. And he gave me like my first tour opportunity. Like um, he kind of lined that up for me. He just gave me a call and was like, are you down to do like two months on the road? No money, da 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 da. Like gave me the worst case scenario. And I was like, yeah, I'm down. And he's like, all right, cool. You know, and like set me up with it. So, uh, and then, you know, um, definitely linking up with Funk Volume. That was a big, big look because 
hop had so much attention that we were able to do huge festivals and travel internationally. I went to Australia for the first time. I went, I went so many places for the first time, um, because of, because of Hobson and funk volume and everything. So that was a big one, you know, like that definitely elevated my status as far as being noticed by a bigger, like uh, community of hip hop heads than I was being exposed to before. So that was What's dope. your personal uh, highlight and personal low light? Personal highlight and personal low light. Um, I guess personal highlight would be like just the tour, the tour energy we bring, like fucking that, the moments of like, you know, triple front flipping into the crowd, me, Dizzy and Moski and shit like that. Those are like highlights for me. Those are the moments that I cherish the most because it's like, we're just going so hard and like having such a good time. Um, I guess low, low lights shit would just be like, um, can't really name anything like off top. I don't really hold on to like the bad shit that happens. I try to just move past it. Um, but I guess it would just be like bad breaks. You know what I mean? Like shit, shit happens, dude. You know, like missing flights and shit like that. There hasn't been any major like career devastating low lights that I can like, you know what I mean? yeah, I'm still on my climb, man. I've been on the climb for shit over 15 years. So it's just a slow, slow burn uphill that I'm just going on, you know? So I try not my, to look back at shit. Yeah. My personal low light in the music and I used to be an A&R. So I did the same kind of thing you do, I believe. It's like a mixtape DJ where I get a verse from somebody, I put it on a beat from somebody, and I send that verse to somebody, and they put a verse on it, and the next person puts a verse on it. And I get yeah. people from around the world to almost do a, every track together, That's and even though, even though they don't know each other. My, my personal light on the music side of things, I once got a chance, DJ O. Will, he offered me a, a chance to get Tyga for 500 bucks. Oh, there and you I, go. And I said, no, Tiger's never going to blow up. Oh, shit. You could have got that verse for 500. Yeah. And that, yeah. Was, that, was, that was like 2009, 2008, when Tiger just started with Young Money. Right, right. And yeah, Bedrock, I, the Bedrock song had just came out. That's a wild, that's a, that's a wild hustle right there. Like, um, you know, I produced all these tracks. Like, uh, I made all the beats, and, uh, and I didn't pay any rappers. Like, because <laughs> it's yeah. just... Yeah, it's all for the love. You know what I mean? It's like it's all homies and like we're just making music. I give them money on the back end on the splits and all that. So, you know, like um it's a uh, it's dope though. Like fucking it's harder cuz there's a lot of MCs that like I can't approach because they're going to just want to, you know, want the bread and like, yeah. me, that's not that's not really the angle I want to go about it. I'm just going about it about the music, you know what I mean? Like if you fuck with the music, let's let's make some music. Boom. absolutely yeah that's that, the way to do it and that's how it was with with me too i never wanted to pay any features i wanted it just to be about the music i yeah. mean you, it was the odd guy that it's a once in a lifetime chance that you got you got a bread and got to lace their pockets a little bit crooked eye being one of them but like you're never going to get crooked eye without it yeah for sure i mean not, he's not yeah. doing a song with some no-name guy in vancouver <laughs> everybody's got to get everybody's got to get paid one way or another you know what yeah. i mean they're definitely they believe in the music and know that like they're publishing and like the streams or whatever or the or the you know the exposure is going to be worth it so it's like yeah. you know even even if i sell beats it's like they get the exposure it's all like there's all value and everything absolutely it's a circle it comes around yeah. uh what's uh what was it like uh, performing in vernon with such a small venue Man, I love I love the small venues, bro. Like those are my favorite where it's like you could just turn up and shit. Um but Vernon was cool. Like uh Canada, the West Coast can that's West Coast, right? Like yeah, fucking, yeah. yeah. All that shit was uh those were really dope cities, man. And and you guys are super nice out there and like really good crowds, you know? So it's like good people out there. Tough, tough uh border patrol, but uh good people. Yeah. Me. Oh yeah, our our borders are brutal. <laughs> in there, you don't want the Americans in there for sure. <laughs> yeah, I just remember Mac Chow going off that night because I don't think the mic was working properly. He was going off. Oh uh, yeah, that yeah, you know that tour in particular, we were we were roughing it. Like I think me and Dizzy were kind of like the tour managers. Like we were like we were kind of holding it down, waking everybody up and getting the day going. And we had a we had a motley crew, man. That was wrong. We didn't really have a tour manager. We didn't have like um sound guy or nothing like that we were just doing it like shit roughing it man you know what if, i mean if yeah. you could play any sport what would it be if i could play any 
like professionally? Yeah. yeah. Shit. Probably like probably basketball because I fucking all my homies play ball and I and I suck, man. I played a lot when I was a kid. I just need to practice. I know if I practice a lot, I get my jumper back. But um yeah, I take <laughs> basketball. And you don't get fucked up. Like football, you get fucked up. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, oh yeah. I'm not trying to you- get knocked out, concussed and shit. What would you say your favorite song is? Fit, that's tough, man. I can't, that's all like mood and you know what I mean? Moment at at the right fucking moment, the Disney song will fucking get you. You know what I mean? Like, like, there's a time and place for fucking everything. So it's like, what about one of yours? What's your favorite? Like, one of your favorite, one of your songs? Oh, favorite song that I've done? Yeah. You know, I love, uh, I love We On with Gavlin. I love uh, Hoppa Cypher with the Funk Volume crew. Uh, I love Maintain with Dizzy and Joey Badass. Uh, there's a lot of jam- I love the new song, uh, Numb, that Wax did on my new record. It's a song called Numb. It's super dope. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, you, got a, you got a track with Mad Child on that album, the new yeah. album, right? I yeah. seen his face in the cover. We recorded that in Canada on tour. Yeah. Yep. Oh, really? Oh, we right on. Airbnb. Um, we rented an Airbnb and I made the beat in the, in the van, I think, um, on the drive. Like, uh, we were just talking about beats and I cooked that beat up in the van, plugged it up. They were like bumping it while we were driving. And then, uh, by the time we got to the Airbnb, Dizzy recorded his verse. And then I think Mad Child sat on it for like a couple of days, wrote his verse. And then like in his hotel, like a couple of days later, he recorded his verse. Awesome. And then, uh, and then I had it. I sat on it for a little bit and was like, who else can I put on this fucking record? And then it hit me. I was like, Ritz, dude. Ritz would be fucking... He's got an unfuckwittable flow. So it's like, let me put Ritz on there. And I uh, hit him up and he was down. So I sent him the record. And that's it. Right on. Yeah. I can't wait to listen to it now. I didn't even know about that one yet. I, I literally just downloaded it. So I got to check it out. Yeah, man. There's a lot. There's a lot of rappers on there. A lot of hip hop on there. Do you still listen to any of your old songs, or is there most most uh, music most music people we move forward? Yeah, yeah, no, nah, I don't listen to shit. Um, you know, even my album like that just dropped. I'm I'm listening to it. It's so fresh. Like, I'll watch it on YouTube and I'll like really listen to it because like the mixes are still fresh to me. The masters are still fresh. But um, but you know, once I start like focusing on the next project, yeah, this shit's you know. It's behind me. It's because we sit there and we listen to the same song over and over and over and yeah. over again thousands yeah. of times. Yeah, you're sitting on the music for a while before you release it. You yeah. You know, so like, uh, especially like the first song you make, you're sitting on that one the longest. So it's like you, you're just hearing that song forever. And then, yeah. Uh, yeah, man. So once it's out, it's on to the next shit. What's that dream venue for you to uh, DJ at? That's a good question. Um, dream fucking venue. Ah, shit. Probably, like, shit. Is Madison Square Garden still around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking Madison Square Garden. Some shit, like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. The, the epic shit, yeah. And, epic yeah, shit. every time we ask that question, a lot of the, a lot of the older people that aren't, like, prospect hockey players, all the guys that are already played in the NHL, they always say Madison Square Garden, or all the music people say Madison Square Garden. Yeah, yeah. It's just got that epic, you know, fuck So yeah. much history. yeah. Yeah, man. Hey, do you have a do you have a dream feature if you could ever get anybody to work with, dead or alive? Dead or alive? I mean, Pac, but right, right. Yeah. Um, I guess if I said that's man, that's wild too, because it's like I'm thinking like just be in the studio and make some shit. It doesn't necessarily yeah. have. It's not like me emailing them a beat. You know what I mean? No, no, no. Yeah, you like, being with them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess a live like um I wanna get I wanna get like a feature with Slug from Atmosphere. Um that'd be fire. KRS one, that'd be fire. Uh Dead like fucking Uh, Miles Davis in the studio would be crazy fucking you know what I mean like oh, yeah. uh, Marley or some shit you know yeah. and yeah just something that would be super vibes okay I got a couple of quick response questions for you feel free to say skip this question if one of them hits a little hard okay. uh, Biggie or Tupac Biggie oh okay yeah Sugar. I know that always throws people off I'm from the west coast too yeah but I- 
I love I love Biggie's pocket, like the flow that he's got. I just Biggie bought he, his quotables. Pac is Pac is like a legend, you know. He's like a movie star. He's everything. He's like a lot, but yeah, Biggie. All right, quick question. Sorry, give yeah, me a long. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Feel free to talk as much as you want about him. Because <laughs> yeah, Sugar Puffy. Puffy. Death Row or Bad Boy? As Death a group, Row. as a group and a label. Yeah. Death Row. Yeah. Nas or Jay Z? Nas. Ja Rule or 50? 50. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, would, I would think so. Then again, Aftermath and Murder Rink as a whole. It got to be Aftermath. Yeah, I'd still take Aftermath. Uh, LeBron, Jordan, or Kobe? Jordan is, is my era, man. Jordan's what I grew up watching, yeah. Who do you think the best uh, rap group of all time is? Wu-Tang Clan. Um or uh yeah because wu-tang's got the longevity they're still yeah. doing shows you can't fuck with that you know what i mean because no. i i want to say souls of mischief i want to say hieroglyphics far side and they're still doing shows too but they didn't drop as many albums like wu-tang is yeah and atmosphere shout out to atmosphere i'm a big atmosphere fan i'm always bone thugs in harmony on that question and then you go wu-tang and of course nwa west side connection yeah, I'll oh, see. So yeah, you got it mapped out. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, we got you with the. If you could play any other pro sport, how do you feel about the state of hip hop nowadays with all this mumble and crap? I'm not mad at it, man. Like, uh, there's so much good music out there. You know, you just fill your playlist with the shit you like and just skip with the shit you don't like. You know what I mean? There's no reason to be mad. What, we, what will we find on your playlist? Um. You know, I fuck with this artist named IDK. Uh, I've been bumping his shit a lot. Uh, I bump the homies. I'll bump Jaren's shit, Dizzy shit. Um, you know, The Blaze With Us 2 is on my playlist. What else did I just get? I think Joey Badass just dropped a little, like, three-song EP. I, I think I downloaded the new Logic. You know, re- you know, I, I try to keep up with the shit that I fuck with. Yeah. The... Um... What's your favorite uh, sports team? Yeah. You know, it'd be LA shit. Like I said, I'm not crazy, crazy, like, knowing all the sports. So it'd just be Dodgers and Lakers and shit like that. My boy Mike, shout out to BC Mike. He loves the Clippers. He, he's a Clippers dude, so. Okay. Were, you, were you ever signed to any majors? Nah, nah. Never signed to majors. Never wanted to be That's really cool. on a major. Like, yeah, when I came up was like, you know, I came up, backpacker style crates of records djing on turntables it was like really like fuck the major labels it was like this is some element shit you know so like uh that's that's really what it was about wasn't about the major label look at all really when i was coming up yeah i was gonna ask you about the independent hustle right right now we got my buddy prince allen dropping in he's came to ask you a couple questions he's from kansas city missouri so kc yeah prince you got him Okay, figure that out. <laughs> what were we? What was the question? <laughs> you know, we were just waiting for Prince. I know, but I asked. Uh, fucking, uh, what was it like uh, in Australia? Like that would have been crazy DJing there. It was cool, man. We went there a lot. I think I went there six times. Um, and it's always fun. Gold Coast, you know, it's like bomb ass weather. It's kind of like California or like you know West Coast Canada. It's really good weather and shit. And uh. Everybody out there is cool. The vibe in Australia is cool. It's really close to like U.S. culture as far as like food and shit. So everything's kind of like it's different, but it's like real similar, you know. So it's easy to adapt and shit out there. It's fun. They party. Prince, out. Prince from KC, can you hear us yet? Figure it out, buds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had to um, get my stuff going real quick. My headphones and all that, but I took them off today. Hey, what's happening, man? How are you? How you doing? How you doing, man? Chilling. We have a little questions, man. Um, how's it just working with Dizzy Wright in the, in that golden age on that album? Um, like, how dope was that? That was super dope. That was super. That was a great album. Um, there was a lot of good songs coming out from Dizzy at that time, like right before he started working on that album. So. I just, I was just sending him beats. I think I did about 
four tracks on that record. And um Oh uh, yeah. I know yeah. you did one with um Ur Definam. Yeah, Irv is and then I did the one with Joey Badass and the one with Logic. Um okay. Touchable. And then there's another one. I'd have to look at the track listing to know exactly. Okay. Yeah, because that's a pretty that's a pretty classic one of his one of his classic uh, albums. Um, yeah, 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 Golden Age is definitely like um, that's a fan favorite for sure. Oh yeah, that's a fan favorite for real for us. Shout out to Zizzy, man, because for real, because I seen seen a little bit of your background. You did like a lot of stuff with uh, Hospin too. Hospin yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. And I tell me a little bit about that because one of my friends is a huge Hobson fan, and his birthday was last week so he's always talking about Hobson so how how's dope being with you know Jaren Benton Hobson and Dizzy Wright on Vogue Value how, how's that how's that energy um in that it's, video? Jokes. it's all jokes man like motherfuckers cracking cracking jokes all day long when when that many rappers are together like um you know it's 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 good energy man like those guys all have, it's not competitive, but it is, you know, in the sense of they're rappers. So rappers are naturally competitive and shit. So when we do a tour, when we were doing those shows, like everybody's feeding off the energy and they're so talented. They're all incredibly talented in their own way. So it was just really good energy being around them. It pushes you. Right, right. The, the energy, like, it's like a, a friendly kill them all but we're not hurting nobody but we're killing it you know what i'm saying because yeah. their bars man like they their bars is really ain't nothing to fuck with you know what i'm saying like yeah. like a lot of people you know what i'm saying especially from from this generation you know what i'm saying because a lot of people think that it's a lot of not a lot of substance not a lot of bars but when they have them three on there you know what i'm saying that's a lot of bars it's out there. You just got to look for it, man. There's, there's, there's people that take the craft real serious. You know what I mean? Like, and continue right. to like, despite people focus on like the bullshit, you know, the music they don't like, right. there's a lot of good, good shit out there for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, you still going to have them hip hop heads and I'm one of them. So I pretty, pretty I much like that, man. And yeah. how do you come with, with the DJ and you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, just was it in your blood or anything? Music was, um, definitely like a lot of people in my family are musicians. And, um, so like that kind of, I kind of knew I was going to get into music. I was playing piano at an early age and guitar, drums, all that stuff. And, uh, making beats and DJing just came like naturally with my love of hip hop. I just fell in love with hip hop. And it's like, if you fall in love with rock and roll, you might end up with a guitar. So right. hip hop ended up with some turntables. Right, because most importantly, you you always go to the first thing that you know. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially if you love music, like me, I used to be like, I love with the you know the guitar first because of my uncles. They used to play bass guitar. Right. But I I sucked at it, but you know I kept on trying though. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> it's a you know what I'm saying it's a love of of anything. You know what I'm saying? Especially when DJing. You know what I mean? When you first hear the track. You know, it's coming from a you know family background, so you know what I mean. Absolutely, love. Opera, I got one for you. What's your yep. favorite movie of all time? Okay, um, damn, that's tough. I can't just name it off the top when I'm like uh, thinking. Top I have, five? Yeah, I'll, I'll throw like a random top five. Usual Suspects is in there. I love that movie. Um, what else? Uh, what'd you say? What'd you whisper? I'm like here, I thought you. Were... Oh, I, I I whispered that this chair's fucked because my chair's making squeaking noises. <laughs> oh, I did that too. Um, but yeah, like uh, fuck, I love Forrest Gump. I'm a sucker for. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a great one. Classic movie, you know. Um, what else, man? What's a good Friday? Yeah. Um, there's an '80s. There's an '80s movie called Rad. That's okay. a fucking. That's Ooh. a jam. When I was a little kid, when I was like 10 years old, I was watching Rad on VHS. It's like a BMX. You got to watch that, dude. Watch a clip on YouTube. It's fucking hilarious. Lori lost yeah. it from Full House. When she oh, was, really? Yeah, when she was like 19. And, and not in jail. And yeah, shit. What happened? What, what, uh, she, she paid for her kids. She, oh, she oh that's, that was her, huh? Yeah. College thing? 
Yeah, she tried. She got her kids into college for paying for them or something. Yeah, my homie was telling me about that. That's fucking wild. All right, um, that, that's Aunt Becky. Aunt Becky, dude, always up to shit. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, what's the Dizzy OG? Oh, that's that's some that's some bomb, man. Shout out to Crown Genetics. They grow that. That's a uh, Cali strain. That's Dizzy's uh Dizzy's first weed strain, and it's fire. It's fire, man. If you're ever in LA, you gotta you gotta definitely go get some. What challenges did you come across in getting to where you are today? What challenges come across? Uh fucking paying rent and shit, making money. <laughs> yeah. Making Life. Uh, but yeah, just that balance of like how do I fucking keep surviving when when my gigs are paying me like fucking eighty dollars and shit and I only do two or three of them a month, you know, like fucking yeah. like yeah, the struggle mode like and that's just where you got to like kind of figure it out and grin and bear it and hopefully get through it. You know, if you keep pushing, you will get through it though. Like, but it's a sucky amount of time and it lasts varying lengths for different people. You know, some people are in that mode for a while before shit pops off, but you got to yeah. Yeah, yeah, stick with it and something will pop off for sure. It well, you're killing it now. So you obviously did the right thing. Thank you, man. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like I said, it's a slow, it's a slow uphill climb, but it's like, it's all been good. You know what I mean? It's just win, little wins, dude, little wins and just build on those and just keep going up and fucking stay consistent. Right. Right. Cause consistency is all, all that matters for real. Like yeah. if you keep consistent, it flows, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Originality, period. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody loves different because trending fades, you know what I'm saying? A lot of trend fades, but I, originality stays forever. So. Yeah, man. If you, if, if you're into, you know anything bro if, if cameo is your favorite fucking band and you and you want to talk about cameo every day and you stay consistent talking about it you shit in a year you'd be the expert on cameo. you know what i mean like you, right 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 be the expert of shit and, doing cameo you know what i'm saying <laughs> like you know what i'm saying hey, which is icons that's why i had it because i actually went to one of the concerts like four years back i saw them twice yeah word of yeah. Yeah. Word up. You know what I'm saying? Them old dudes still know how to rock yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Well, I Just was having that working. energy knowing that, you know what I'm saying, is a wonderful experience. You know what I'm saying? Because you see that and you see they can still rock crowds. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like any of, you, of our favorite rappers or fa favorite mus musicians. They still got it. You know what I'm saying? No matter if it's low budget or high budget. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. If they got it, they still got it. You know what I yeah. mean? And a lot of them do because, you know, it's not for them. It's not a trend. It's 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 their life. You know what I mean? It's what they love to do. And shit. Right. Like, it's what you love to do. You know what I'm saying? Long. Yeah, man. Hey, yeah. DJ Hoppa, I can't thank you enough, man, for taking your time for us and coming on today. We really appreciate it. No doubt, man. Uh, this is cut off now, but any chance you could uh, throw a shout out and just say uh, your name and that you're on I Only Touch Greatness podcast? Yeah, man. Yo, okay. I'll wait, wait, give me one second. I got to put it on speaker view. There you go. Go. Yo, what's good? It's DJ Hopper. Shout outs to I Only Touch Greatness. Yep. Podcast. Shout outs Woo! to the I Only Touch Greatness podcast. Yeah. Thanks, Hopper. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. Blessings. Peace.